Hey, Maria, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hi, thank you for having me. Glad to have you here because you have done something that lots and lots and lots of people would really like to do. And that is you paid off a bunch of debt. And so we're glad that you are willing to come and share your story to inspire others to follow in your footsteps. But before we do that, can you just take a moment and introduce yourself to everybody and let them know what you're all about? Yes, I can. So my name is Maria. Hi, everyone. Um, I am also known as Modern Budget Curl on Instagram and on YouTube. I am a veteran, recently discharged, and I am currently a special needs nanny. Uh, and I have a YouTube channel and I do financial coaching more recently, just trying to figure it out on a budget and live a debt-free life. Nice. We love living the debt-free life. So you're living that debt-free life now, but at one time you were actually deep in debt. So talk to us, let us know how much debt you were once in and describe the type of debt that it was and how long it took you to get it out of your life. So I grew up believing the whole good debt, bad debt myth that we all have heard about. So um, I always thought credit cards and car payments and things like that student loans were going to be in my life forever. And my sister actually um, started following Dave Ramsey and I started hearing about it and things like that. And when I came back from my first deployment, I spent a lot of money. Dave Ramsey talks about it, how the military, right? When you leave base, there's so many things to buy. Um, I racked up a bunch of credit card debt. I got a brand new Jeep because I mean, I had just come back from my first deployment. So, you know, I deserved it. And by the time I got my act together, I was over $88,000 in debt, um, which consisted of student loans, credit cards, and a car payment. It took me two years, two months, and 10 days to pay it off. Man, that's no joke. $88,000 of debt destroyed in just a little bit over two years is a phenomenal, phenomenal feat. Now, take us back to when that point where you made a decision, a conscious choice that you didn't want debt in your life because I'm former military and I know all too well that payments of all sorts are one, accessible and two, normalized. But for you, you made a decision that you didn't want to be normal, you wanted to be different. But how did you get to that thought? What gave you the idea in the first place that you needed to change and you needed to get out of debt? So I had actually found out I was going on my second deployment. I had a pretty quick turnaround for my first and my second. And I was just kind of reflecting on my first deployment on things that went wrong, went right, and how I could do different. So I had thought, I was like, I just made the most money. In my first deployment, I was 22. I was like, I just made the most money of my life. And all I have to show for it is debt. Like, I have this Jeep, but I'm making payments on it every day. I have all this furniture that I'm still making payments on, things like that. So um, everything that my sister was saying kind of just clicked one day. It all just made sense. I was like, you know, it makes sense. I was like, and this is really the prime opportunity. I was unemployed at that time I because I was a reservist in the military. So I was unemployed at that time getting ready for gearing up and getting ready for deployment. I was leaving the next month, and all I had to live off of was a tax refund check. And I was like, well, I need to make this stretch. So initially I went to my sister for a budget and then she started talking to me about certain things. And I was like, it makes sense. I was like, this is the prime opportunity. I'm going to have such high income with such little expenses. I can get this going. And so so once, you, that's my trick. once you sat down with sister and she explained the budgeting process, what were some of the moves that you made to your life in general? I'm sure that this was not uh, an easy transition from just a thought process, a worldview, because you were used to getting money, spending money. Now you're about to attempt to totally flip that on his head. You're going to now budget money. You're now going to be intentional about where every dollar goes. Like talk about mentally the shift that you had to make in your paradigm in order to make what you wanted to do actually happen. 
I had to get out, you had to get in the right mindset, right? Everything's kind of mindset. So I had to put myself in a future mindset instead of the instant gratification. I want it. I'm going to get it now mindset. I had to stop telling myself that I deserved everything just because I was simply doing what all adults do, working and things like that. And I had to stop spending money on things that didn't matter to me, just trying to keep up with the Joneses, like things that didn't really resonate with me that I didn't need to spend my hard earned money on. I needed to reevaluate everything and be like, is this something that I actually want or that brings values to my life? And just change my mindset from that instant gratification, instant, I want it now mindset. Now, what about friends? What about, you know, family members, other, we know your sister's on board. She's the one kind of coaching you through this transition in your life, but you're young. You have friends that are doing this, friends that are doing that, probably fellow soldiers that did what you did and went and bought cars and stuff. Because when you go to a deployment, you come back with, like you said, more money than you've ever seen before. And if you don't have any type of skill set on how to manage it, you're just going to go through it. So you have all these people potentially around you, people on the Internet, Facebook, Instagram, showing off, showing what they're doing. So how did you block all of that out? and stay the course on what you were trying to do with getting out of debt? How did that not affect you or throw you off track? I mean, it definitely would throw me off track sometimes, but I think it was also just a matter of catching myself if it ever did throw me off track. My sister supported me and my parents are immigrants, so they never really understood the whole debt thing. So at least my immediate family, kind of it all made sense to them. And to my friends, I'm that type of person that, like, once I get something in my head, my friends kind of know they can't talk me out of it. So it's kind of like, you support me (laughs) or you don't, but I'm still going to do it. So thankfully, all my friends were really supportive about it. There was definitely times where I was like, you know, I can't really go here because it's not in the budget. But what I saw was once I started getting more comfortable with saying no and being like, it's I can't afford that, more friends were like, well, I'd rather have you there you know, I'll spot you or something like that. And not every, I understand I'm privileged to have people like that in my life. So thankfully my close immediate friends and family supported me. The only people who didn't really understand and sometimes would make comments were the people who I would only see occasionally, who I wasn't as close with. So it didn't really bother me as much, thankfully. So I I was blessed in that aspect. So now I don't know everybody's listening. At 88,002 years, what did you do? Talk about some of the things that you did action steps that you incorporated in order to get yourself to the place of debt freedom? So the first thing I did was to evaluate why I wanted to do this. I needed to sit down and think about why at this moment I was feeling this pull to do this. And then I needed to sit down and go through my budget and seriously think about everything, whether that was adding value to my life, whether it was taking away a value, whether I needed it or what I didn't, because everyone else's priorities are different. And, you know, that's great. I think that everyone just needs to be honest with what's important to them. So making my budget and understanding that it was a process, you know, giving myself a little bit of grace uh, through it was what helped me because, you know, there'd be times where I would go over budget and then I'm like, oh, this isn't working. But it's like, Every month is a new month and a new start and a new way to get closer to my goal. Um, Also having visualization. So like the debt-free charts were great because then I was coloring things in. So definitely having my income, my expenses, cutting anything that wasn't necessary out. And just being honest with myself and giving myself a little bit of grace were definitely like the action items that I took Mm -hmm. to get started and get there. And every little bit that I could send to debt, I was sending to debt. I started side hustling when I came home from deployment because I wasn't making as much money as on deployment. So I was used to making such large payments. Like my first year, I paid off $60,000. My second year, I paid off like 19. So the payments had reduced so much and it was like I was losing the motivation. So side hustle brought that up. I was like, I started babysitting on the side, which is actually how I started now. I'm a special needs nanny, which is how I started this and made that transition full time. But side hustling and understanding this is temporary. It's a temporary sacrifice for something that 
it's going to pay off so much longer in the future. How'd you find babysitting jobs? Care.com, Sitter City, my, um, some people in the neighborhood, like I would just ask around. My sister got me my first babysitting job because she used to babysit. So she got me with someone and then I spoke to her and she was in a mom Facebook group. She put me out to the mom Facebook group. And once I was in that mom Facebook group, it was like, I was like, whoa, this is, I, it, I was turning away people because right. it was like too much. So, you know, definitely, but Sitter City and Care.com are amazing websites that you can go and find people through and just ask, asking around because sometimes people don't know that you're willing to do something like that. How did you make yourself kind of stand out, you know, on, you know, sites like uh, Sitter City or Care.com? Like if somebody's listening that thought maybe, yeah, maybe I should try that, like, how do you make yourself um, the pick that people choose? Are there some tips on how to stand out in a crowd of people that are potential babysitters? Yes. Uh, having a clean driving record and helped a lot. Being prior military helped a lot. Being willing to sometimes do things that maybe other people won't. Because when you think of babysitting, some people only think about caring for the child, you know, but I would offer to do laundry or clean around the house or something, especially if the child has screen time or nap time. I would always offer to do something else. So I'm not you. I'm putting my best foot forward and offering them more. And then I realized that in return is when they would see that, you know, and most of the time they didn't want me to do any of those things. But even just a simple offer, things like that, I'm being genuinely myself and honest with them and. Just, I love, you know, kids. I grow up in a Spanish family, so we have so many of them. <laughs> so I think that was definitely a way. Um, Care.com allows you to pay for a background check, which I did do. I mean, it is a little bit of an investment, but once you pay for a background check, then they know that they don't have to run one on their own and you'll stand out. You'll get messages. The messages started rolling in once I did that. Nice. Or any of the other side hustles that you did you care to share? that other people might want to think about doing? I think that mainly I just did babysitting. That kind of started, and I was looking into other things. I did Lyft and Uber a few weekends, but it was I was getting so much babysitting, it was like I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Technically, I have Lyft and Uber. I did do that sometimes, especially because I live near New York City, so at nighttime, in the middle of the night, like if I was – sleeping or something like that. I would just sleep a few hours before and then drive around at night because everyone goes out to the bars and clubs and things like that. So that was definitely an option. I did that a few weekends. So Uber, Lyft, and babysitting were like my main ones. For you, what was the toughest part of your journey to debt freedom? So the toughest part of my journey was, as I mentioned, um, prior military. So my second deployment was really hard and lonely I didn't go with an organic unit I was a cross level so I went with another unit I didn't really know people um so it was really lonely for me and there was a lot of things that happened so I now suffer from PTSD so mental health and money have this it doesn't always gel well so for me I was always really lonely, but I was on a, this budgeting journey, and I used to sit in the middle of the night, like watching your YouTube channel, <laughs> watching Freedom in a Budget, Wendy Valencia, and it kind of just made me feel like I had this community of people, and I wasn't so alone, even though I was so far away and so and felt so alone. It kind of just like helped me connect a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to get no, emotional. Take your time. Um. And I, it was, especially when I came home, I feel like those months were really, really hard for me because I was in a really dark place and I was suicidal. So it's kind of, when you're in that mindset, it's kind of hard to think about future you and the future period. Like you're paying off debt to hopefully one day not have those payments, not have all of that. So when you're in such a mindset and you're facing so many things, it's moving forward doesn't always seem possible. So that is around when I started um, my YouTube channel because I just knew that I needed more 
sense of community and more accountability and really just, you know, started working toward, towards that. And in the first few months, I didn't even really want to admit to myself that there was something wrong because I was always that strong, like got promoted really quickly, like female military police. I was always that strong person. So, it, you know, there's a stigma of mental health is weak, like having all these things is weak. So in the beginning, I didn't even want to accept it because of the false that's up but um once I accepted it I kind of just rooted my community my friends and everything else and kind of just let everyone else into my mind and then once I found the community on YouTube and Instagram then that's kind of helped me that was my biggest obstacle though that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about is you know mental health money and how sometimes we make all these things for future us, but sometimes we don't even see future mm -hmm. us. I mean, you know, it's still something I struggle with, but I just recognize it. I recognize emotional spending was so bad. Self-sabotage was really bad in those months. And, you know, I still have my moments. It's just being open and honest with those around you, you know. Yeah. I, uh, shout out to you for being transparent. And being willing to be honest and open about um, the battles that you had to go through and even that you still face, because I think that that's something that a lot of people, more people than not, have experienced, are experiencing and don't even realize it. They just they don't have the words, the language to put to it. Right. You know, your experience in the military kind of led you down a path to probably sit down with someone who helped you put language to what you were going through and you found out PTSD. Like some people don't even realize that the sadness that they're feeling around their money could be a mental health situation. So shout out to you for bringing light to that topic. I want to encourage you to continue to do that even on, on your platform, your YouTube channel, your Instagram, because I think it's a conversation that more people need to have with themselves and even with professional uh, counseling. So would you encourage people, no matter if they are going through uh, the challenges that you've gone through or they're just trying to figure out how to stay in the fight to debt freedom, is community something that they should seek out if they don't like for you in that moment, you didn't have community around you in person. So you saw it community online is that something you would advise others to do i would definitely advise other people community i feel like there's that's the number one you can especially like you can be doing this on your own and if you don't it's going to be easier for you to get in your own head about maybe this isn't right maybe this is anything else but even community like the deaf free community that we have here on Instagram and on YouTube, we all support each other so much. You know, whenever someone gets down, we pick each other back up and having that, you know, there's even anonymous Instagrams and um, not, I don't think there's any anonymous YouTube channels, but there's anonymous Instagrams where no one posts their face, you know? So if you're seeking a community, but you don't necessarily want, you don't have, you're not, you don't have the ability or you don't want to show your face or show your identity, you can definitely still go through that. There's definitely so many Instagrams that don't show those things. And, you know, they still get that same sense of community. Community was probably number one for me. That's what helps keep me motivated. And that was like the most important factor, I feel like, in my journey. Because yes, I can have a budget, but if I'm by myself having a budget and not talking through things or not seeking other advice, it's just me and a budget. And for me, it can become something that at times I would resent. But having a community of people behind me really just helped push me forward. A 
Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you work so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit CrushMyMortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's CrushMyMortgage.com. So that day came, though, where you crossed the finish line. You were able to make the very last payment on your debt. So what debt was it that you paid off last and describe that day for us? Because there's plenty of people listening that are trying to get there and wonder what that's going to feel like. Yes. So it was three student loans that were left. It was a little over $6,000. Um, and I wasn't even expected to pay off my debt until a few months later, but everything kind of lined up. So I did my tithe and then I had the amount left and I actually waited a day when I saw it in my bank account. I was like, wait, is this really going to happen? And I needed to wait a day. It was a Friday. I saw the money um, in my account and I went home. I had about 10 minutes. I came out of work and I was going to go to youth group because I'm a, um, one of the youth leaders at youth group. And I was like, I was just feeling so empty all day. I was like, I need to make this payment. So I took out my phone. I went on Instagram. <laughs> it's on Instagram in my highlight reel, like my debt free. And then I paid it off. And I was just like, what? It just didn't even feel real. Like that whole weekend, I was floating on cloud line. And like, if I was invincible and it was so emotional for me, I was like, it was just so like, I don't, I can't even really explain it. It was just amazing. It was like a, I don't know. <laughs> it was such a surreal feeling. And I was just like, wait, did that really happen? I was logging in like every day for like the next month. Like, oh my gosh, there's really no payments. <laughs> like it really says zero. So you did it, man. You, you fought hard. You fought through a lot. And I mean, Two trips to Iraq. Let's not let's not minimize that. I did one, and I know what one feels like. I can only imagine what two trips feels like. Um, you battled through the ups and downs as far as your income, um, your side hustling, your your fighting through mental health, and you did it. You are debt free. The day came. You paid the last debt. What does life feel now after the fact? After you crossed the finish line, how does life compare today? Now that you're debt free to back then when you first realized, man, I got eighty eight thousand dollars of debt that I have to get rid of. I feel free, free. Like, I feel like anything is possible. It's like I accomplished this so I can accomplish anything else. Like I can accomplish anything I put my mind to. I set my mind to. It's amazing. And no one can kind of stop me now. It's like I'm dreaming dreams that I never would have thought possible. I'm looking at, you know, travel and things that I never thought were going to be a part of my life. And it just feels liberating. I feel like I have like an army around me protecting me from anything. You know, if something happens, like Murphy happens, I'm ready. I have an emergency fund. I have this. I can take anything that life throws at me. So... It just feels free and liberating and amazing. That's how I feel now. Before I felt so stressed out. I felt like I didn't, I couldn't talk about money. I felt like I didn't want to think about money. I couldn't, you know, I, I was enslaved to that, to my debt. And now I just feel so free and liberated and it's amazing. What's the biggest lesson about life overall that you've learned as a result of going through this journey? Balance. I think that balance is the biggest thing um, because I feel like it's it's hard for us to get really intense about some things and 
for us to slack off a lot about things. So I feel like it's all about balance and seeing what works for you. There was a couple of times where I recognized that I was about to hit budget burnout. So maybe that time, you know, I would allow myself an extra 50 or a hundred dollars that month to spend on other things. And just realizing that everything just balance everything in life, especially when I was working and side hustling and going to school. It was a lot. So just balance and giving myself grace. And I feel like that's something that I've integrated into all aspects of my life now, not just my debt free journey. So Maria, were there any books or any resources that you read or took in that helped you to stay motivated or helped you to learn more about money or just life in general that helped you through this process? Yeah. So I feel like the first thing that I read was the total money makeover by Dave Ramsey. You know, that's kind of when it all made sense to me. Um, and then Rachel Cruz came out with love your life, not theirs when I was deployed. And my sister actually went to the book signing and she signed it for me and sent it in a care package and, it was like such a awesome thing. And it just, that resonated with me so much because she talks so much about comparison living and things like that, that we deal with now. So that book was amazing. And the financial diet, they, their book came out earlier this year and they have a YouTube channel. And that book was amazing. It kind of gives like an overall guide to everything, not just the budgeting and money aspect of it so those are all great recommendations and we'll be sure to have links to everything that maria mentioned inside the show notes of this episode if there happens to be someone listening or watching you right now who is like thrilled that you were able to accomplish your goal to become debt free to now be able to dream dreams that you were not able to before but they don't feel like they can do what you did they feel like their situation is different and they feel like they just don't have what it takes to become debt free. What words of encouragement would you offer to that person if you had a chance to sit down with them one on one? It's possible. There's nothing standing in the way of you getting it done by yourself. Um, you know, I faced unemployment during this journey. I faced mental health struggles and there's nothing you can overcome. And you're going to learn so much about yourself during this journey, it's possible. Don't get discouraged by a bad month. Look at every month as its own unit or every week or every paycheck as its own unit and just never give up. No matter how many times you fall, just get back up. Just get back up and keep fighting the fight and surround yourself by community and like-minded people. If you don't have it in your real life, then find it on YouTube, on Instagram, like I said, I was so lonely and at such a low point. And, you know, even this is all like a 360. The fact that I'm being on his and her money show is like surreal. You can do it. It's possible. And at the other side, it's it's wonderful. It's possible. You can do it. There's nothing standing in the way but yourself. What's been the reaction from family and friends as a result of you crossing the finish line? I know sisters got to be super proud. What's been everybody's reaction? Everyone is almost in awe. Like, wait, you paid off how much in how much time? Like, you have a budget? Things like that. I feel like it wasn't the first few months of me being on Instagram and YouTube. I never really spoke about it. So once everyone saw that, they were just like, wow, now my church wants me to lead an FPU. Now I have friends reaching out to me for coaching. It's almost like they all see that it's possible now. Because like you hear about faraway people or people you don't know doing it, but once someone in your life has done it, it becomes even more real. So everyone has been amazing, asking questions, reaching out. And it's just been awesome to help everyone else kind of see that it's possible and start their own journeys. It's, it's beautiful. Awesome. So tell everybody more about your YouTube channel, how to find you there and how to find you on the Internet overall. So my YouTube channel is Modern Budget Curl, like 
curly hair. <laughs> um, and I just talk about figuring it out on the budget. I um, do share my budgets on there. So if you would like to see that and see different things um, more in the next coming months, I will be opening up more about my mental health struggle and it relating to money and things like that. Um, and just kind of showing all aspects of me instead of just the money aspect. But it definitely documents my journey. There's grocery hauls, there's budgets, cash envelopes, different topics. Um, and my Instagram as well, I try to put motivational quotes. Um, I try to show everyone else that's winning and highlight everyone else um, and build everyone else in this community on Instagram. So my Instagram is at Modern Budget Curl and my YouTube as well is Modern Budget Curl. Maria, this has been awesome and inspirational. We are super thrilled that you were able to make some time to make this interview happen and inspire others to do what you have done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.